Since the surprise result of the UK's EU referendum on Friday the 24th of June has been much talked about some of the big blue chips, some of the big companies, how they're going to suffer, where they're going to go, who they're going to start pairing off with, whether or not they can do cross-border deals. But what about the small caps? So we're talking now to a small cap specialist from Stockopedia.com. It is Paul Scott who's been with us before. Paul, welcome. Welcome Hello, back. Jeremy. Thank you for uh, we spoke, back. We've spoken to you before about uh, some of these small caps, but it was a, yep. a time when things were a lot less, a lot more calm. It certainly was. <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting week for the blue chips. What about the small cap index? Just talk us very briefly through the way in which it's moved in the context of the moves that we've seen the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250. Well, the Friday uh, and the following Monday, immediately after the Brexit vote, you just had pandemonium. Uh, it, pretty indiscriminate selling. Um, and then since then, we've had a, a, a gradual sort of recovery. I mean, I, I compared the uh, four indices I look at between uh, the, the close of play immediately before the Brexit announcement and yesterday close of play, so a one week difference. Uh, the FTSE is actually up 2.6%, which I think has staggered everyone. Mm. But of course, the core reason for that is that something like 70%-ish of FTSE 100 earnings are dollar denominated. Mm. So that's, th that's a currency effect. Uh, the mid cap index has actually dropped about 6%, and so has the small cap index. AIM is a little bit of an aberration, down 2.6%, because five out of its six largest constituents have had positive uh, company news. So we can ignore that. So, so small caps, yeah, lagging, and mid caps lagging well behind the FTSE 100 at the moment. What was it an indiscriminate selling for small caps? To begin with, yes, um, but I think you had particular sectors that just where we saw a pretty remarkable um, derating of entire sectors in two days, whereas normally at the end of a, a bull market that happens over an extended period of several months. So recruitment, for example, house builders, these things were massively slammed, huge moves um, with the large caps and the small caps as well. Um, We've seen a lot of direct dealings actually this week as well, I think, in some, yeah. of, these, some of these big, um, big stocks, especially the house builders as well. So we're looking potentially here about stock picking, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. I think whenever you get a, a, a panic sell-off like this, people are rushing for liquidity, it creates lots of opportunities for people who know the stocks in more detail and knows which ones actually probably shouldn't have been sold off as much as they were. So, so, so what, what, what's your base case in terms of some of the headlines to watch out for in the stocks that you're looking at? What, what exposure have they got particularly that are going to benefit those over others? Well, I think the key thing probably at the moment is the devaluation of sterling. It's moved so much against the dollar. Um, you've really got to find out uh, um, what proportion the geogra geographical spread of turnover and profits for individual companies is. Um, what we're finding is that a, quite a lot of even smaller caps have significant amounts of dollar earnings and they've been sold off as well with everything else and that's a quick rebound for maybe 10 to 20 percent for people who understand and know that company and know it shouldn't have been sold off. So there have been lots of opportunities like that this week. Just, just a couple of things before we get onto some of the individual stocks. What about the liquidity in the small cap? Arena? Very, very important point. I mean, liquidity is there when you don't need it. Um, but what I found to my great cost in 2008 was that, particularly if you gear up on very small illiquid stocks, and the bigger the position, the worse it is, you can't get out of them. So that massively um, uh, makes risk reward far, far worse with small caps in a crisis. So I think everybody should be terribly careful about not using gearing on these small caps, or, or if you do, then spreading it over a lot of them. Um, it's gear today, gone tomorrow is the, the, the thing. Gearing itself isn't necessarily dangerous, providing you can get out of the positions. And with micro caps, I wouldn't gear on them at all in, in markets like this. So is that your big uh, mistake learning exercise from 2008? Absolutely. I, think I always have to learn my lessons the hard way. And in 2008, I personally lost about £5 million through um, being geared up on microcaps that I just couldn't get out of. The market dried up. Um, and it was a catastrophe. Have, have you made that up since? Just as um, no, um, I'm. You know, I've, I've recovered to a certain extent, but um, I'm not taking the same big risks that I did then. Mm. I think it's better to, you know, be, get through a difficult patch. And you know, I do want, want to warn other people about the dangers of, of, of. You know, it really is. It's not ever a good time to take big geared positions in illiquid stocks. Mm. Mm. Talk about uh, warnings. Um, yes. We have had some small cap warnings this week. Yeah, we have. Um, Foxton's warned on profit 
profits uh, on Monday. Not really a surprise, you know. I mean, the London property market, particularly the high end, was sort of freeing up uh, well before the EU referendum. They um, put out a warning. The shares have dropped. Um, I mean, it's quite interesting. A lot of stocks that already anticipate a profit warning. They come down in price because everybody knows, yes, they're probably going to warn. Then they drop again, another 20 or 30 percent on the profit warning. So you might then start to see opportunities. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure about Foxtons yet. I might. Uh, watch that one, but they've of course they've got half their business is lettings, which will mm -hmm. carry on as normal, you know. Um, and also, anecdotally, I'm hearing that foreign buyers are actually coming into the London market now um, because everything's 10 15 percent cheaper because of the so, sterling devaluation. Yeah, so yeah. it could be a blip. I don't yeah. know, but it might be. So, Brammer, another one on um, Brammer warned, warned, yeah, this is uh, now th this one was a much more serious warning, it dropped about 57 percent because they, in, they put in something saying they're going to be very close to breaching their banking covenants. Now, whenever I see that in an RNS, I absolutely run for the hills because you're then into a potential situation. We saw that again with a company called Sapura recently, where um, they again had borrowed too much money, they ran into a patch of tough trading, the share price collapsed, a Sapura dropped by, by you know, 85% from the highs. Brammer was down 57% on the day. Um, but I think it'll probably get through at that one. It might, Brammer might have to raise a bit of equity, but it, it, it's an in, possibly interesting special situation. What is Brammer? What, what's it do? Um, it's, it's some sort of engineering um, group that does sort of, um, it's exposed to the oil and gas market and it's pan-European. Because there are some engineering companies that are doing well, like Flowtech. Yeah, well there's interesting read across actually. Flowtech Fluid Power, um, not to be uh, confused with Flow Group, which is uh, vastly inferior, but Flowtech uh, Fluid Power has, has sold down heavily in sympathy with Brammer, but I think it's actually a much better quality, albeit much smaller, business. So I think that's oversold now, so I've been buying a few uh, Flowtech Fluid Power. Mm. Um, talking there about um, the housing market, how about mm. some of the things that are associated with moving and new houses and so forth? What's the. Well, they, the uh, g good question. I mean, they've all been sold off as well. I'm starting to look in, in that sector because my belief is with interest rates now likely to stay ultra low for an extended period you know housing is very, it's, it's much it's still affordable not on income multiples but certainly on mortgage repayments it's a lot lot cheaper than renting so I'm actually quite sanguine about the housing market so I'm looking for opportunities there I've recently bought some tops tiles which I think is has been dropped to about a third um, now BlackRock were buying heavily um, just before the referendum so I think that'll go up carpet right as well uh, put out an OK trading statement recently, and I think they've got some. I think that's got good upside from the current level. But mm. both very bombed out, but mm. fundamentally quite good companies. You mentioned about the US dollar. This is going to be a really big factor, of course, as the war, not so much the dollar as the pound, especially against yes. the dollar. What about those dollar earners? I think you, you alluded to them earlier on. In terms of some of the picks in that area, what should we be looking at there? Well, I've um, I've got two ideas there. There's a company called Somero Enterprises, uh, ticker S O M, which is a global company, but about it's actually based in America, but listed on the UK market. Um, and reports in sterling. So, of course, their profits have just gone up 15% roughly. Um, their main market in, that they sell to is the American market, but initially the shares dropped on the Brexit vote. So, that was a, a, an obvious buy, and it has now uh, actually risen about 10%. But do, but do they import raw materials at all, or do they import? Um, There'd be an element of that, yeah. So, yeah, does that sure. consider, because that's going to be more expensive? Yes, of course, yes, that's right. It may not, uh, there might, may not be a a complete uh, yeah. read across from the currency, yeah. but it's certainly very favourable for them. And you've got a similar Im currency impact favourably for UK exporters. Um, so on that front, I've be recently been buying Port Merion, the, pro uh, the pottery company, and Zytronic, which exports about 95% of its production made in the UK. Mm. Um, and again, both of those dropped on the, the Brexit fear. They shouldn't have done, yeah. um, in my view, and they're starting to recover now. Uh, you mentioned recruitment as well at the top of the interview. Yes. I mean, for the, for the, for the large cap um, aficionados, I would know the likes of Michael Page and, and, and that sort of, uh, sort of company. What about the small cap uh, recruitment? Well, specials? I mean, the, one of the first things companies do when they're uncertain about the outlook is they, 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 they freeze uh, new hiring. So uh, I think that the, the recruitment sector is undoubtedly going to suffer over the next six months, if not more. Um, but that's been reflected in the share prices. A lot of these things have already been, been marked been down up, a huge yeah. amount. Um, we've had two, two warnings. Prime People put out excellent results but said we're nervous about H2. Uh, Interquest warned on profits. These are both very small recruiters. And the shares were slammed. They halved. Even though it wasn't that bad a profit warning. So I think um, it, 
this is an interesting sector. Staffline is my current pick in that sector. Uh, it's dropped by uh, at least a third, the shares have, but it's a really good, well-managed company. I think it should be pretty well insulated from um, any downturn in, because it supplies blue-collar temporary workers, which isn't going to stop, is it? So, yeah. uh, One of the uh, sectors I'm interested in that you've highlighted is that is car dealerships. Yes. One particular stock there. What's, what do you like about car dealerships? Well, the, the car dealership, the models ha has changed considerably over the last two or three years. Instead of people buying them on credit now, what, what tends to happen is that something like 80% of uh, private buyers are now actually uh, taking personal contract to hire leases, which are very, very cheap because interest rates are so low. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, I've got a brand new car recently and I'm paying 200 odd quid a month yeah. for it. It's yeah. ridiculous. So I don't think um, actually new car sales are likely to drop that much. And in any case, the dealers don't really make the margins on the new cars. They make the margins on the after yeah. sales. Yeah. And so these new hire cars are, are generally serviced at the franchise dealer in the first three years, because you have to, on the terms of the lease. And that's where they make the money. So, so pick? my pick is called Virtue Motors, ticker VTU. The shares have halved in the last few months, but it's got a bulletproof balance sheet. It's got net cash. It's got stuff full of free holds and I don't think the earnings will drop that much so I think that's an interesting one and big director buying recently as well this week yeah Let, let's let's move ahead and, and take a look at the rest of the of the year we're in the second half now yeah. um, how do you see the second half developing I mean you mentioned a couple of companies there with warnings already um, and I, I guess that was because that was already in the pipeline mm. do you see what has happened recently with the downturn in our spending and all the that there could well be a lot of warnings in definitely this? definitely I think there'll be a, a profit warning galore in the second half so we've really got to think through the business model of every share we invest in and I've chucked out uh, things where I've got any sort of doubts about them so I think big ticket consumer items might well be deferred I don't think this is necessarily a time to be in things like double glazing or conservatory shares um, Cars is a bit different, as I say, because of the structure of the, sure. the, the industry. Um, and I think you just have to be prepared. You know, I think if you buy something now on a PE of 7 and the earnings half, then the PE's gone up to 14. It's not cheap after all. So I think balance sheet strength is absolutely key. Yeah. Um, companies that have borrowed too much and suddenly their earnings collapse, they could be in big trouble with the banks. So I would avoid any highly geared companies, uh, if, for if sure. If anybody wants to link in more with what you're saying, how do they go about it? Well, I write a daily um, article every morning for stock uh, forward slash small caps. It's free. Um, uh, although they do ask you to register just so they can try and persuade one or two people to, to, to become uh, clients. Um, and it's driven by trading updates and result statements. So I'm a former accountant, former FD. Um, so I, I, I dissect the numbers and I look for things that are wrong in the numbers and I've got a pretty good track record of identifying uh, dodgy companies and warning readers about them. And you're also an IG client? I am, yes. Um, what, do you, yes. What, what, what do you like trading on, on the IG platform? Um, well, mainly small caps, actually. I mean, it's surprising how far down it goes. Um, but also, I think there are some quite good hedging instruments, for example. I mean, a lot of people make the mistake of shorting the FTSE 100, but that's not relevant to small caps, as we've seen recently. Yeah. I think that you can use the, uh, you can short the mid caps index on IG, which I use sometimes as a hedge. Because where you've got, a, say, a 5% spread on a small cap, you don't want to be going in and out of that. So you want to hold your position, but maybe have a short on, on, an on the mid caps index, you know, when you're Nervous. Okay, look, it's a pleasure, Paul, and uh, thanks right. indeed uh, for, for coming in. It uh, is uh, Paul Scott, as we heard there, who is an IG client, and uh, some advice there. Also, to be able to catch up with him on uh, stockopedia.com on his blog, um, he is there from stockopedia.com with us here on IG Live.